I've been coming to the Badlands for years now. I've probably been here about a dozen times. Honestly, this is one of my favorite places to photograph in the world. This is a landscape that is defined by water. Erosion is what has revealed all these layers in this soft bentonite clay. So there's all these different colors. You can go in and you can find pastel greens, yellows, blues, reds, whites, and browns. There's a lot of beautiful raw material for making exciting landscape compositions. A good photographer has to go out into the landscape, find a good background, find a good foreground to work with the scene, bring it all together. But what I love about the Badlands is that it doesn't give it up easy for you. I'm professional photographer Ian Plant, and I have the honor and privilege of working with some of the best photographers on the planet. And for the next two weeks, I'm gonna be exploring the Badlands of the Dakotas, a barren, stark landscape that challenges even the best photographers. But it just so happens, I am joined for the next two weeks with one of the best photographers I know, Joseph Rosbach. He is a fierce competitor who always brings his A game. Joe and I are going head to head, mano a mano, in an epic one-on-one -on -one photography showdown. We're gonna be challenged by bad weather, heavy rains and high winds, all in our quest to make the best photographs possible. Two photographers, two weeks, one mission, to get the shot, no matter what. Hey, yo, where you at? Hey, buddy, I am uh, pretty much rolling up on you right now. I'm close to the park. Hey, man. Hey, dude. So good, good to see you. Man. What's up? Ooh. All right. How so been? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. A little tired, long drive, but I made it. I'm feeling good. Glad to be here. All right. Well, are you ready to check out the park? Dude, I am so ready. I just spent the last 40 hours driving. Let's freaking do this. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to work really, really hard this week to follow the right weather patterns around and put myself in the right place to get that dramatic light that I want that's going to change this from sort of monochromatic to magic. I've been coming to the Badlands a lot over the past few years, and that's going to give me a bit of an advantage. Because, you know, when it comes to photographic skill, Joe's raw talent is like here, and my raw talent is here. But the fact that I've been coming to the Badlands so often means that that's gonna elevate me to here, which means I am gonna beat Joe during these two weeks. There's just no way around it. It's math. Now I've heard people refer to Ian Plan as the Bobby Flay of landscape photography, but I'm here to tell you folks, I'm taking the Iron Chef down. We are caught between two massive storm systems right now. One giant system on the east and one big system coming in from the west. And we are in the one space in between where there's some clear skies. So this might be the only place in hundreds of miles where there's a chance of getting good light. So we're hiking out into the wilderness. We're gonna go in a few miles to this one sandstone feature that we spotted from the road. It's way out in the distance, but it stands up bigger than anything else. It's this giant pyramid of rock and it looks pretty cool. So we're gonna head out to it and hope that we get some epic light tonight. On the hunt for something new, baby. I was excited. Some pretty rigorous hiking back here. These uh, mounds are really tall and I'm having a tough time finding something. Everything's really steep and there's not a lot of good foregrounds. So I may have come all the way out here for nothing. And it's too bad because the clouds and the light are really nice right now. Well, it's time to get back to it. I gotta find something before the light drops. Well, I why the hell on the other side of that thing out there? Ian's over there. I didn't like it. I didn't think the foregrounds were gonna work out great. Um, so now I'm kind of trying to rush back to a spot that I saw on the way out that I think has some promise, um, but Sun's starting to get low in the sky, so I don't have a lot of time, and I'm just hoping that I can make it huh, over here and find a good composition while I still have some of this nice light bathing the Badlands. Yep, getting to think I made a huge mistake coming out here. So I've got to get clear of this big stuff 
and find some of the smaller mounds as quickly as I can because the light is dropping fast. So I gotta start jogging, I think. Whew, I'm getting too old for this stuff. Wow, I've really got myself lost in a maze of tall hills and narrow canyons, but it was well worth the effort. Found a composition I like. I've got some erosion patterns that are leading to this big mound in the background. And right now this gigantic thunderstorm is building up behind the mound and it's catching the last light of the day. So I'm gonna wait a bit for the color to intensify, get the shot, and then get out of here before it gets too dark for me to find my way out. So all is good. I found an amazing spot here in the Badlands. I hiked up a different uh, valley and then way up high into these buttes and look at this view out here. Absolutely stunning and the light is just hitting all this stuff has all this different striation and color in the um in, in, in the clay and the bentonite out here and it's just absolutely going to be stunning tonight the light's getting good i gotta get to work it uh, turned out to be pretty good got some good light on that storm cloud and the composition was i think pretty effective so i'm going to get moving as quickly as i can to get out as far enough as i can in the twilight before it gets too dark I've gotten myself into a bit of a pickle here. When I came down off the hill I was photographing on, I somehow managed to get into the wrong canyon, and I didn't realize this until after about five or 10 minutes. When the canyon wall started to really narrow on me and nothing looked familiar, I realized I had gone in the wrong direction. So instead of trying to get creative and find a way out of here from where I am right now, because it's getting dark, because I'm afraid of getting trapped here when it gets too dark to find my way out, I'm just gonna cut my losses. I'm gonna backtrack to the spot where I came down and get back up there. And hopefully from there, I can orient myself and find the same way out that I came in and get out of this maze before it gets too dark for me to escape. This has been tough going, uh, navigating through this canyon. It's really narrow. And in some places it gets maybe about a foot or two across and I've had to scrape my way through and there's mud pits and there's tumbleweeds that have come down and blocked the path. So I'm getting pretty scraped up. I think that shorts were a very poor fashion choice for this hike. I won't make that same mistake twice, but I think I'm almost to the spot where I came down. So hopefully I can uh, get back there when it's still pretty bright out and find my way out. I've been hiking through these canyons for about 20 minutes now. It keeps on getting darker and darker. Every time I think I'm back to the spot where I came down, it turns out to be the wrong spot. So I've been doing a lot of climbing up and down and uh, it seems like every time I get up to a hill and then I get back down to the other side, I'm in another narrow canyon and uh, I'm getting pretty tired. So I'm hoping, hoping that I find where I was and from there I can figure out how to get back. Oh, this is not looking good though. Okay, so I, I think I'm back at the spot where I came down from the hill where I was photographing at sunset, but I'm not sure because everything looks the same right now and it is getting darker. And this is actually pretty steep what I've got to go up here. Got about 100 or 200 feet to climb and it's as steep as you can get before it becomes a cliff. So it's gonna be a lot of fun going up there. Well, now that I've climbed up, I realize this is not where I came down, but the good news is I can see the spot where I was photographing, where I did come down. The bad news is, is that it's like three or four ridges over. So I've got to go down, up, down, up, and so on to get there. And I really don't feel like taking a chance and trying to take one of these canyons out. So I'm just going to huff it. I'm going to do all that hard work, get back to the spot where I was. And from there, hopefully I'll be able to see my path out. Heading down again. Whew. Climbing down is a bit of a misnomer. I'm really just sliding down. And now I gotta find a way to slide back up the other side. Whew. Oh, rattlesnake. Yep, I can hear a rattlesnake. Can't see it. It's about 20 feet away from me. Let's see if I can find it so I can get around it. I hear it, I just can't see it. Okay. Well, it's above me, I know that. 
probably in its den, and it is hissing something fierce. It's got to be like 10 feet in front of me. It's well hidden. You know what? I think that discretion is the better part of valor. I'm gonna leave this guy alone. I may not know where he is exactly, but I know I don't need to be there. I still got one more ridge to climb to get back. Well, that was exciting, encountering a rattlesnake. I actually don't see him out here that often, but they are here. And now that my blood is pumping and my adrenaline is flowing, it'll give me that boost to get up this one last hill so I can get out of here. But from now on, I'm gonna step very carefully. Oh, up the last hill, or so I hope. Poor Joe, I've got the car keys. He's probably back at the car waiting, wondering what the hell happened to me. It's been up and down, up and down. But finally, I'm back to where I was photographing at sunset and I can see where I went wrong and I can see the proper canyon down there to uh, go down into and get out of here. So there's still a little bit of light left. I think I've got just enough light to get out of the maze. And then from there in the twilight, I'll be walking back, but I know that terrain pretty well. So even though it'll be dark, I should be able to find my way back to the car without any problems. So I'm just gonna rest for a moment, take a breath and then get on out of here. We're heading out to the maze for round two, and the skies look epic. There is this big storm somewhere off to the southeast, and it is pushing all these clouds in our direction. And the western horizon where the sun is going down is perfectly clear. So I'm hoping this will stick around for the next hour and a half. And when sunset comes around, I got a feeling that we are going to get some epic shots. All right, I am back in the maze. I didn't go as deep into the really gnarly part like I did last time. I don't want to repeat that mistake twice. I'm hoping that some of these stormy clouds that are up above me right now will stick around. It is about an hour and 15 minutes until sunset, and I'm gonna start working these compositions even though the light's not really that good because I wanna get used to the compositions. I wanna kinda of work through all the permutations and the variables, and that way when the light is good, I can pick the best of the compositions that I found and work those spots intensely while the light is great. I mean, I've scouted dozens of compositions and each one seems better than the last. So when the light is good, when I have that 20 minutes, maybe a fleeting light, I'm gonna be running around, scrambling from composition to composition, trying to pick the very best ones. I've got one or two that I think are really superb and I'm gonna work those probably first. But once I'm done with those, I might bounce around to the other ones. I might stay with them. I don't know what's gonna happen. It all depends on the light. It all depends on the clouds. It's just gonna be a crazy, crazy time. I hope I get something good. I'm really nervous right now. Now. This is the last night and it would be nice to just put a feather in my cap and to walk away with an epic shot. Well, the light is about to break out in the west and it's going to paint this scene in some magical light, I believe. Um, pretty close to this uh, eroded foreground, which is creating a very beautiful sweeping uh, radial foreground that leads the eye um, right into those big, beautiful mounds in the background. And of course, I got this gorgeous sky blooming above the pinnacles and looks like the light is just about to break out you can see it changing just a little little bit got a tiny bit brighter it's probably hard to see that on the video but any moment now this is going to smash the pinnacles and it's going to be absolutely fantastic it's happening the sun is coming down it's beginning to light the landscape it's time to get to work I love the Badlands. I've been coming here for years, and every time I come, I explore more of this incredible landscape. And it may not stand up as grand as some of the other national parks in the United States, 
Uh, but there's just something unique, something subtle about this beauty, something that I feel like is kind of entirely my own. When I come out here, I know I'm exploring parts of the park that most people don't see. And I'm just coming out and finding my own unique compositions. And every time I come here, I explore a little more and the landscape draws me in just a little bit more. I want to explore the area I've just explored even more the next time I come here. And before I realize that I've been drawn completely in, it's like an addiction and I love it. I can't wait to come back. Couldn't have asked for better light on our last night here. This is incredible, it's so incredible. I don't want to waste any time talking right now. I'm gonna get back to shooting. Well, stepped in it again, and we got some incredible light for the last night of the trip. What a great way to end an amazing two weeks here in South Dakota in the Badlands. I couldn't have asked for anything better tonight. It's a crazy, chaotic environment, and it's really difficult to come out here and make effective photographs. And it's that challenge, I think, that draws me more than anything. I mean, I think this is a beautiful landscape. It just really speaks to me. And it is one of my favorite places in the world. And one thing I really love about it is that it doesn't have hordes of photographers. And certainly in the areas where I'm going, uh, I'm not really that far away from the park road, usually no more than a mile or two, but that's all it takes to get away from people and to find spots that the vast majority of people aren't photographing. And I love coming out here and just trying to find a way to fit all of these random visual puzzle pieces together to form a meaningful and compelling photo composition, something that's gonna tell the story of this place and that is gonna have an impact on my viewers. This has been an epic photo adventure and I'm so glad that you could join us on this creative journey. I absolutely love the Badlands. It is one of my favorite places in the world to photograph. Every time I come here, I find something new. We had a great trip. We made some amazing photos, but I'm already looking forward to my next photo adventure here in the Badlands.